Bend and Scoop is brought to you by Harder Concepts, the best bars in North Dallas. Eat, drink, party harder. I love Bend and Scoop, man. You want to hear some music? You'd like that, wouldn't you? Well, today you're going to get all the music you want. The request lines are now open, KGFJ Soul Radio. Do it now, man. Request lines are now. It's open, man. Got any Blue Oyster Cult? No, I don't have any Blue Oyster Cult. I ate 34 pairs last time around. Where were you? I was that close to working at 7-Eleven, you know. Pass the word along. Tell the men it's time to shoot the moon. Shoot the moon! Not out there on the microphone. On the microphone. Shoot the moon. Shoot the moon. The attitude dictates that you don't care whether she comes, stays, lays, or prays. I mean, whatever happens, your toes are still tapping. It's strawberry! Oh, strawberry. Hey, what's happening, man? How you doing? This is my friend. Hey, how you doing, man? What you looking at, man? Oh, no, nothing. <laughs> I, I wasn't looking. I was just... I wasn't looking at his neck, man. Can you honestly tell me that you forgot the magnetism of Robin Zander or the charisma of Rick Nielsen? That's kid stuff. Kid stuff? Well, how about the tunes? I want you to want me. The dream police. Da -da 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 -da. Build your muscles picking strawberries. You know, band of stoop. Maybe I can get you a job with United Fruit. I got a buddy with United Fruit. Start with strawberries, you might work your way up to these goddamn bananas. Win, boy. Are you going to get your act together? We're creating a society of cell phone crazed, marijuana smoking zombies. to you not quite live from lukewarm tallboy studios deep in the land of gar this is bend and scoop the podcast featuring music mirth and minutia focused on exposing artists you probably haven't heard but should i'm bob and i'll be your tour guide on this amazingly asymmetric auditory adventure as we journey to the center of your cochlea welcome to episode 73 Bend and Scoop is brought to you by Harder Concepts, the best bars in North Dallas. Visit one of the now six great Harder Concepts locations in DFW, including Scruffy Duffy's, Ringo's Pub, and the brand new Bottle Rockets, all at the Shops at Legacy in Plano, Saintsbury Tavern at Austin Ranch in the Colony, the Mucky Duck at Addison Circle in Addison, and Addison Ice House at Vitruvian Park in Addison. All Harder Concepts locations have great food, live music, an amazing beer and spirit selection, and a wait staff that's second to none. Whether you want to hang out with old friends or meet some new ones, there's no better place to get together and watch your favorite sports or hear some awesome tunes. Eat. Drink. Party harder. Joining us at the end of the show to play a round of Is That Your Vinyl Answer and the Groovin' After Party will be our special guest, Chris Lathrop, from the Pot of Thunder podcast. We spread the gospel of vinyl here at Bend and Scoop, so be sure to tell us all about your favorite neighborhood record store by posting to at Ben Scoop on Twitter or Instagram using the hashtag Spin Mom and Pop. Our record store of the week is Dusty Groove in Chicago. You can follow them on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all at Dusty Groove. And you can check out their website at DustyGroove.com. Kicking things off is a band from Toronto called Ducks Limited, whose brand new album, Modern Fiction, is the best album I've heard all year, maybe even in the last couple of years. Here is the lead single from that one, great track, 18 Cigarettes.
Washington girls have lots more fun with 
about the beer commercial? I read for him this morning. And? And they like my sincerity. How they like your acting? Oh, Marty, how much can you do with that's what I call beer? Marty, get me a play, any play. It's not like you never had one. Last summer, Shakespeare in the Park. Lab D! Thank you. I got it. The Schlitz commercial. I got it. Hey, that's great! No, no, you're what's great. I wouldn't even have known about it if you hadn't told me. Oh, I'm very happy for you, Jim. Mm. God, I swear to God, I'll remember you in my will. Honest to God. Mm. <laughs> I'll let you guys talk. I'll call you the later. All right, man. Hey, Jerry, congratulations. You told him about the beer commercial? Yeah, he's in my acting class. He's a good guy. You told him, and he got it. Schmuck. He'll do the same for me sometime. And you believe that? Double schmuck. Oh, come on, Marty. You didn't lose the commercial. Get you a head exam. Hey, did you put these on separate checks? No, I put them on rye, like you said. A schmuck and a smart ass. I'm surrounded. <laughs> That was Oh Gunquit from their 2017 album Lightning Like Me. That was So Long Sucker. Campfire Songs is a podcast where I get together with my buddies Todd, Jim, and Tom to share and discuss songs with each other. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Songs Campfire and give us a listen for more great music. Here is Wilmington, Delaware's Grace Vonderkoon with Rock and Roll Gary from 2021's Pleasure Pain.
WJBK 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 Radio 15 In Detroit Milwaukee's Rex with three X's with Lost Cause of his 2020 album Pure Pleasure 2. Have you ever wanted to host a podcast? Well, all you have to do to join the Mike Hunt and host your very own episode of Assume the Juxtaposition is send me your topic idea to lukewarmtallboy at gmail.com. You can follow Assume the Juxtaposition on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all at AssumeTJPod. From Boulder, Colorado, here are the Yoppers from their 2019 album Human Question. This is Child of Mercy. Every reminder that 
two years at Actors Studio for this? Well, it's it's just like any other part. You know, you gotta really get into it. I mean, when I was at that theater, I was Captain Avenger. Listen, I gave it a shot. And I was doing okay until some kid got me with a pellet gun. Right in the ass. Wanted to find out if I was really tough. What'd you do? I screamed. I'm not tough. Not in the ass. was Melbourne, Australia's Screensaver from their brand new album, Expressions of Interest. That song was Body Parts. How Many is a podcast where I get together with my friends Jesse, Junior, Gary, and Scott to debate a variety of pop culture topics, including movies, sports, TV, music, and more. You can follow How Many on Twitter at How Many Podcast and listen at HowManyPodcast.com. And don't forget to stick around for the end of the show when we'll be joined in the Groovin' After Party by our special guest, Chris Lathrop from the Pod of Thunder podcast. Up next from Stockholm, Sweden, are D Rangers from their 2018 album, All You Need Tonight. This one is I'm Your Fool. You sure been busy lately No time to talk at all I'm your fool
God invented rock and roll, he was thinking of a band like Van Halen. Announcing a major rock debut, the thunderous energy, emotion, and power of Van Halen. Van Halen, a bone crusher first album on Warner Brothers Records and Tapes. That was Philadelphia's Ali Awan from 2019's Butterfly. That song was Pick Me Up. If you want to listen to all this great music without having to hear me ramble between songs, be sure to check out our Bend and Scoop Spotify playlist. If we played it and they have it, you can listen to it there. And if you enjoy listening to what we do here on Bend and Scoop, please take a moment to subscribe, rate, and review us wherever you get your podcasts. And if you really enjoy what we do here at Bend and Scoop and would like to show your support, please feel free to drop a little something in our virtual tip jar at patreon.com slash bendscoop. 
If you anonymously spread the word about Bend and Scoop, we really consider you to be a hero at large. Somewhere in the heart of this city, in a small shop closing for the night, a robbery is in progress, but help is on the way. Mind if I drop in? Captain Avenger! John Ritter is Steve Nichols. How about that? Hero at large. Who are you, J. Edgar Hoover? I'm Captain Avenger. Such a nice boy. He can't fly. Tomorrow I'm leaping over a tall building at a single bound. Wrong guy. I'm expanding. He can't bend steel. I'm in big trouble. Fighting crime is a dirty business. But when there's danger, he can't turn away. You're a crazy man. He dresses up in a comic book suit and goes around doing good deeds. Hold it right there. Don't make another move. If they're going to use real bullets, I think I'll retire. He's loved by women. I'm not always this easy. I bet you say that to all the girls. Cheered by men. They want their superhero and all he stands for to hold on to. And worshipped by children. Captain Avenger. Yes, sir. Let's see you fly. A hero's work is never done. He's nutty, but noble. I'm counting to three, Milo. Who the hell is that? This is Robert Redford. He's dizzy, but dedicated. People putting themselves on the line for other people. That's what being a hero is. But he's really just an actor who got carried away with a role. It's just like any other part. You gotta really get into it. Captain Avenger send you out on these missions anyway your agent i took a third rate movie made it the biggest hit of the year with a simple gimmick captain avenger comes to your neighborhood authorities are still wondering who the man in the red blue and yellow costume with a large a on his chest really is it's me steve nichols all he knows about heroes is that people need one uh yeah i heard it a couple of times all he could do was make himself hero at large well i think it's really terrific john ritter Ann Archer, Bert Convey, and Kevin McCarthy. Hero at large. At last, help is on the way. Come and knock on our door. We've been waiting for you. Where the kisses are heard and heard. Yes, three's company two. Come and dance on our floor. Take a step that is true. We will love all the things I need to say. Three's company two. You'll see that. Let's call the game that we call for you. Down at our rendezvous. Three's company two. People listen to people. So listen, people. Welcome to the Grieving After Party. Come on in and pour yourself a cold one. Joining me now for our Grooving After Party here on Ben and Scoop is Chris Lathrop from the Pot of Thunder podcast. Welcome, Chris. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me. Tell everybody about Pot of Thunder. I'm guessing based on the name, it has something to do with Kiss, the hottest band in the world. It used to have everything to do with Kiss. We started out in uh, April of 2013 with the crazy idea that we would do an episode devoted to every studio recording uh, that they ever put out. Out, um, thinking that we wouldn't make it through five or even 10 episodes. So why not come up with an idea like that? And um, people ended up liking the show. We stuck with it and we ended up making it through their entire song catalog of studio recordings, which uh, totaled about 290 episodes. Wow. So, so you even it. did a ep- uh, show for every song from music from the elder you you even went all the way through that as well 
the whole thing. Um, <laughs> now, there's a few things that got omitted, like from the box set and some other kind of one-offs and rarities. But, you know, every uh, studio album that was released under the uh, KISS brand, which includes the 478 studio or solo albums, uh, we did every, uh, one episode devoted to every song, which amounted to about 290 total episodes. That's awesome. Yeah. So now, after we, that, did y'all yeah. move on to like Fraley's Comet and all of the the other tertiary uh, projects? You know, we considered that, but uh, we wanted to cast a wider net. So we kind of opened it up to our listeners and um, we got a forum on our website, potofthunder.com, where people can uh, submit uh, songs that they want us to analyze on the show. And, um, you know, we've got about over 4,000 songs on that list now. So we'll wow. never run out of material, I don't think. And there's some, you know, the uh, outside of Kiss uh, solo material uh, has been submitted. We draw the songs at random and we've done, we've done a couple of uh, Aces uh, solo things outside of the band, but there's plenty. And I think a Peter Chris one as well. But oh, um, yeah, so there's plenty on there, but, um, you know, it's pretty much uh, just general rock, hard rock and occasional, uh, you know, delving into R&B and whatnot. But, um, you know, it's it's open to all music genres at this point and we're still going at about episode uh 435 i think currently oh wow yeah so are they weekly uh how often do you publish yeah every week uh comes out every monday um that's the schedule people Excellent. say they like to start their work week off with it so we're locked into monday <laughs> fantastic have to give that a listen folks pot of thunder so chris let's learn a little bit more about your own musical journey and play around with something here we like to call is that your vinyl answer and okay. we'll start by asking what do you remember being the very first record that you bought with your own money when you were a kid uh does it have to be on vinyl or no no not at okay. all all right so the first um well i'll give you a little background on uh, the history with vinyl so i was born in uh, december 1966 Ooh, we're almost exactly the same age i was yeah, september 66 okay <laughs> Um, and so I would say around 1970 ish is when I kind of knew what was going on in the world and with my life, um, you know, things started to have, you know, memories of things that were going on. Uh, and my parents had one of those, uh, you know, console stereo systems that looked like a piece of furniture, you know, the lid that lifted up, it yeah. lifted up the lid, the speakers were uh, built into it, you know, it was like a credenza, I guess would be the name of it. But but uh, yep. open it up and there's a turntable in there and AM FM receiver and whatnot. And um, so, yeah, that was my first introduction to music. And my parents had a uh, collection of vinyl that actually was pretty cool. They had a mix of like uh, Fifth Dimension albums, I remember, and uh, Peter Nero albums, if you remember who that guy was. And, um, you know, kind of a like a swinging 60s collection of, of, uh, of vinyl. Dion Warwick was in there, I remember. Um, but the two that I gravitated towards was uh, uh, Bridge Over Troubled Water, Simon Garfunkel. Yeah. And then they had that uh, Beatles compilation, Hey Jude, that came out, uh, out right around 1970. They had mm -hmm. a, a mix of stuff from throughout their career. And, you know, those were the two albums I played a lot and just kind of got me hooked into like pop music, you know, especially the Simon and Garfunkel. Funkel. I mean, the title track and the boxer are two of the greatest pop songs of all time. And he's got immediately hooked into that. And then, uh, you know, mom started buying me all those uh, k -Tel compilation albums. That came oh, yeah. So that gave you a nice uh, sort of mix of things every time you bought one. And uh, so those were cool. But uh, the first albums I bought with my own money, I got a hand-me-down uh, sort of eight-track player for my cousin. Yeah. Who the guy who introduced me to Kiss, by the way. Um, and my first two eight tracks were Rock and Roll Over by Kiss and another Beatles compilation, Rock and Roll Music. I remember that one because I got I remember buying that record, the Rock and Roll Music compilation. It was silver, it had a real shiny silver yeah. exterior and the gatefold. I got that, I think, for my 10th birthday. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, it was right around the time when I, you know, had a few uh dollars of my own and and popped for 
for those two eight tracks and uh, pretty much off to the races ever since. So now, do you remember where it was that you um, picked those up and do you still have either one of them? I do not have my eight track collection. I, I wish I'd have held on to that as well as my parents' vinyl collection, but uh, those things all kind of went bye bye in uh, like an estate sales type thing when when uh, when the old man passed away yeah. and I had to move my mom out of there. And I was dealing with all that from out of state. So I just had somebody handle uh, selling everything. I wish I'd have held on to that console stereo. System. Oh, yeah. That would have been cool. But uh, I just didn't have the capacity to deal with all that at the time but uh, on uh east side of detroit or the area where i grew up they had a chain of uh, record stores called harmony house so oh, that's okay where I, that's where i bought all my eight tracks back in the day and like i said sadly i don't have them anymore but uh yeah i, I would say before i switched back to vinyl i had amassed probably a collection of uh, close to 108 tracks over the years wow that's impressive that's fantastic. Yeah, the first car I drove when I had a got my license was my mom's car that had an 8-track player in it and I actually had a stereo that you could record on eight track, like you could go buy blank eight tracks at Radio Shack. So I right. would make eight track mixtapes like in 1981. Oh, it's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Eight track was the first portable medium, really. That yeah. And, and they, they made them specifically for car, car audio. So, yep, definitely. Definitely. Now, who do you own the most albums by? I'm going to guess possibly Kiss, but if not, maybe someone else. And which of theirs is your favorite? Um, so again, you, you count in like all mediums yeah, any downloads. medium exactly yeah um it could be kiss just because i um well in terms of owning i kind of checked out from kiss in the 80s so i never really bought any of those albums um you know i've since listened to every song obviously doing the podcast. oh sure yeah some some were surprisingly good but most of it as i suspected was kind of crappy in the 80s but um uh looking through my uh probably because i listen to everything on digital these days just because the convenience of it but yeah. uh, i would have to say it's a close tie between uh probably zz top and motorhead okay all right yeah. which uh which of those two groups albums are your favorite what's your favorite zz top record and your favorite motorhead record oh zz top i'd probably have to say uh rio grande mud the second okay album. yeah although you know i there was a I, I used to say and you know up until recently i would say that i preferred that to trace ombres which everybody most people point to as their top shelf album um and i used to always say i pre preferred rio grande mud because the songs I like on that album, I like more than the songs on Trace Ombres. But then I was doubling back and looking at the track listings, and it's hard to hard to top Trace Ombres. I think every al every song on that album is primo. Whereas there's there's one or two filler cuts on Rio Grande Mud for me. Yeah. So I mean, you know, I'm the type of guy who just doesn't like to defer to what everybody thinks is the classic album right but in this case you you, just, you 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 can't say anything different about trace home brace it's definitely their high water mark i think okay and then uh motorhead would be pound for pound my favorite motorhead album is 1916 okay uh, came out in 1990 and uh the reason i say that is it's got the the perfect mix of uh song quality production quality and it has uh, filthy animal tailor on drums um ideally it would have fast eddie clark but i think uh you know in addition to obviously lemmy uh you gotta have phil taylor on the drums he just adds that trashy punk rock quality to it that you know made the band uh palatable to metalheads punks all, any kind of rocker back in the day and it, to me it, it's all rooted in him and his drumming okay all right fair enough is there any specific album by any artist that you've 
purchased more times over the years than any other different formats, different editions, that sort of thing? Man. Um, oh boy. I'd have to say probably um, just about anything Van Halen really, because, you know, I was buying those albums in real time when they came out. Um, actually discovered them right after the second album came out. So then I had to regress a bit and go back to the first album. But then as those albums were coming out, I was buying them in real time, you know, yeah. um, and all on eight track. Cause that was, my, <laughs> that was the only, uh, you know, piece of equipment I had that, that I could play it on and also right. listen to the car. But then, as you know, in the mid eighties, you know, compact discs started coming out and, um, you know, it was like, uh, the big thing to do, um, you know, when they were coming out was, was to replace all your, uh, albums that you already had on CD because, you know, there were no uh, pops and crackles on them anymore. You could skip around to tracks, however you wanted and The sound clarity was quote unquote better you know yeah. um, so i ended up buying all the van halen albums again on on cd and then um you know over over the course of my travels i uh, lost uh lost track of, of a lot of my cd collection and just left them behind at places where i lived or just didn't pack them or whatever so so when it came time to do digital downloads i would just you know download all the van halen albums the roth era of course so yeah i was gonna ask if you stuck with them through the uh, Sammy Hagar years or not? <laughs> well, I remember when 5150 came out, it was pretty exciting, you know, just to, to have that new uh, voice in the band. And I thought there was some new energy, but, you know, ultimately uh, those soccer mom ballads that you know, <laughs> on the band just kind of, I couldn't deal with it. You know, love walks in and uh, feels so good and all that other bullshit that he uh, <laughs> Sort of forced on them, which you know made them a lot of money and and sold them a lot of albums. But I I just couldn't I just couldn't take them seriously with that. I mean, in the raw theory era, you had jump, but it wasn't it wasn't anything close to those other songs that I named. And you just yeah. never got that kind of pandering schmaltz with uh, the raw era. So, <laughs> but there you know there's some gems in the Sammy era, but I'm definitely a definitely a raw era guy for sure. Oh so, yeah, so yeah. I think I owned the Van Halen albums, except for cassette. I never really got into cassettes, um, you know, except for maybe one or two that I bought over the years. But um, other than like blank cassettes to record my albums on. Right. But um, the, all the Van Halen albums with Roth, I've owned them on like all three mediums over the years. Okay. Well, it's solid. Those were, those were five really excellent records. Uh, who's got the biggest vinyl collection of anybody that you know? And what what size is yours? Do you currently have any vinyl or did all of that go by the wayside when you cleared out your folks collection? Yeah, all my, I had some vinyl. Um, you know, I built up a nice collection in college because I worked at the uh, college newspaper as the uh, entertainment desk editor. Oh, so nice. Yeah. Every day I would get <clears throat> a box of albums from the record labels trying to get, you know, press placements and reviews and, and you know, whatever papers that they would send us, send it to. Yeah. So I'd get a box of probably 20 albums on vinyl every day um and they were just you know at any genre you can think of whatever the label was promoting at the time and i kept the ones i liked the other ones i went across the street to flat black and circular which was the record store in east lansing michigan where i went to school and i would sell all those for like a buck or two a piece for for beer money for the rest of the week and uh so yeah i built up a pretty pretty nice diverse uh vinyl collection but uh again like out of necessity or just sheer laziness every time i moved which was a lot back in the day i just if it was too much of a pain in the ass to move certain things i would just leave it behind and unfortunately that uh, included my my vinyl records so yeah i don't know i i haven't held held on any any vinyl to this day and i'm i'm all about digital just because i you know i like to have the convenience to listen to the car and stuff like that. And, you know, I don't really have the luxury to sit down at a, you know, component rig with a turntable and just like consume music like I used to back in the day when, when I didn't have all these grown up obligations. So. Yeah, that makes sense. Does anybody that you currently know have a really big collection? Any of your 
co-host on the podcast or anybody else that you can think of? Yeah, Andy's got a lot of uh, vinyl. Um, it's in storage right now because he's having a, his, his home uh, renovated, but uh, in the room of his house where he used to record, he had a couple of uh, shelves full of vinyl. Um, and I have another friend of mine who uh, runs his own meadery down here in uh, <clears throat> Crown Point, Indiana. If you don't know what mead is, it's like that honey wine or whatever that's kind of the, oh, yeah. the new hipster uh, alcohol these days. <laughs> but he, he's he's all into you know turntables and vinyl and looking at uh, getting rare copies of things on eBay and you know he's always uh, posting about his new acquisitions and I, I I would imagine he's probably got vinyl collection numbering up in the thousands at this point. What's your uh, favorite? all-time mom and pop record store i'm not sure if there's any place you go currently since you're not really collecting vinyl very much but it you know you mentioned a couple of places in east lansing and in detroit is any anything you recall that was maybe your all-time go-to uh, there was a there's a head shop on the far uh, east side of uh, Detroit called the Groove Shop. Yeah, which uh, had you know vinyl records, but they also had you know go down the list of all the iconic sort of '70s posters that you remember. Oh Zeppelin, yeah, Aerosmith, uh, Sabbath. You know, I, I I I pretty much wallpapered my dorm room with posters that I got from the Groove Shop, and they also had like you know great books of uh, you know rock photography and stuff like that and then in the back you know they had all your sort of uh smoking accessories to put it uh, <laughs> politely which nowadays <laughs> stuff that shit's all legal which yeah was mind but <laughs> in the back room you know you had to know the secret password to get back there and then all sorts of uh water pipes and what have you so, yeah um, yeah it was it was a cool <laughs> place you know these obvious uh older stoner guys were there working the place but you know they had anything rock related from posters to vinyl to books and patches and buttons and all the stuff that you know rocker kids were buying in the 80s they they had it there so i, I used to love <laughs> going there very cool very cool yeah. one last question for you chris what is your all-time favorite cover song oh man all-time favorite cover song Jeez, we've probably been asked this uh, question on the show before because one of the segments we do is another form we have on the website is people can uh, submit a set of three questions. And oh, pick at random. We answer answer at the end of every uh, episode. Um, jeez, time favorite cover song. Let me turn the tables on you while I'm thinking about it. What's your all time favorite? You probably said it before on the show. Yeah, so. I've, a couple times. The first. First one that I always think of is "Take Me to the River" by Talking Heads because I I really like the Al Green version. I love Al Green, but just it's it's different. It's it's very distinctly different, and I just really think it's a great great version. Um, but there's you know there's a couple others. Obviously, the standards like you know all along the Watchtower, which is you know just mm -hmm. way better than the original, and there, there's several others like that. Um, and then there's even there's even a, uh, you know, I didn't realize until recently, and I, and I can't remember where I saw it, you know, going back to Kiss, but apparently King of the Nighttime World is a cover that like that was... I did not know that either until we <laughs> delved into it on the show. And I was like, what? I had no idea. So I was like, that's interesting. So yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. So I would say then, I don't know about all time favorite, but it's up there and it's along the lines of all along the watchtower where it's uh, it's so superior to the original that it's yeah. it, be it became like they 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 made it their, their song. And that would be uh, Rosalie by Thin Lizzy. Okay, excellent. Uh, cover of Bob Seger song, which, you know, growing up in Detroit, Bob Seger was everything. It's like uh, Seger and Nugent are just kind of in your DNA if you grew up in the in Detroit in the 70s. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Rosalie was on one of us, uh, uh, Bob's uh, pre-Silver Bullet Band um, albums, which actually um, uh, a, an album that he uh, just uh, disavows to this day, the Noah album by the yeah. Bob Seeger system. You can you, you can hear it in its entirety on YouTube. But uh, the guy, the other guitar player in that band, was my first guitar teacher. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, it was an interesting. He was an 
interesting guy. And it, like when, when he was on the Noah album, you know, management or the label like had these uh, visions of him being on on Bob's level and sort of being, you know, equal uh, attraction in the band. Which if you listen to the album, you realize that it was a pretty bad idea. But yeah, definitely an interesting uh, glimpse into the early stages of Bob Seger's career. But I think um, an album or two later, he had Rosalie on it. And then Thin Lizzy uh, opened the fighting album with it and uh, just made it their own. You know, they, they always, you know, make a point like on Live and Dangerous. They introduce it as a Bob Seger song, but everybody just identifies uh, Thin Lizzy with that version. In fact, I don't think many people have probably even ever heard the original. Yeah. And, you know, going back to mentioning Van Halen earlier, boy, they've got several really great <laughs> examples and you really got me. That's kind of like an all along the watchtower, you know, it's the, the cover is the standard now more so than the original. Uh, I, I don't know about if I would go that far with that particular song is that, or that original is pretty iconic in terms sure, of, yeah. you know, one of the first recorded examples of distorted guitar. And yes. You know, He's like, you know, it's kind of a toss up as to, you know, which, uh, which version people prefer. It kind of depends on your, on the age thing. But, um, I think something more interesting is their cover of You're No Good on the second album. Yeah, you know, that's right. I could open the album with, which, which was one of my first introductions to, uh, um, to the band. And I, you know, saw the, uh, um, you know, the song title and I'm like, this can't be the same song. And then you listen <laughs> to it, and it's a hard rock version of, uh, was it, was it Linda Ronstadt? Yep. It was, yeah. well, Linda Ronstadt had a hit with it, but of course all of her stuff was covers as well. Right, so right, right. Somebody else must've done it before her, but yeah, hers was a, was a hit. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, there's, there's a million of them. I could probably change my, uh, answer tomorrow <laughs> if you ask me again. But, uh, <laughs> but when you, when you started, when you mentioned, uh, all along the watchtower the that uh, Rosalie popped in my head as uh, you know a cover that a, the, a band turned into their own. Yeah, so. that's a great example. And I will, and I like what you said about the live album because that that was really kind of how I realized it was a cover when they mentioned Bob Seger right. on that recording. It's like, oh wow, okay. So yeah, that was fantastic. Well, Chris, before we wrap up, um, how can folks follow Pod of Thunder uh, and or yourself on social media on Twitter, Instagram, so forth? What are what are ways they can keep tabs on the show uh the website is pot of thunder.com uh that's also the twitter handle and you know if you search uh, facebook you find us on there we're also on instagram and uh pretty much any anywhere you uh get your podcasts we're on there spotify spreaker uh, apple podcasts uh Podbean, all that stuff if, uh, wherever you like to listen to your shows uh search for us i'm sure we'll be on there all right and is it pot of thunder at pot of thunder on twitter and correct yep yeah. okay awesome well chris thanks so much for being on and folks again give it a listen pot of thunder every monday we'll talk to you again soon chris thanks for being on yeah thanks again don't worry about it guys it's all in the mix Bend and Scoop is a production of Lukewarm Tallboy Studios. We will return tomorrow morning with the sun. Good evening, and have a good life.